We've been to the moon. We've sent machines to Mars. We even have a space station orbiting high above us right now. But the real mystery? It lies below us. Beneath the waves is a world that we barely understand. It's dark, crushing, and cold. And yet, it covers over 70% of our planet. So how deep have we gone? With all our science, how far have humans actually made it into Earth's oceans? And what stopped us from going further? This is the story of the deepest places we've ever reached. A journey into pressure zones that crush submarines, past the wreck of the Titanic, down to a trench so deep you could hide Mount Everest in it and still have room to spare. But despite everything we've built and everything we've tried, there's one question we've never fully answered. How deep can we really go? Since the 1950s, scientists have been measuring the ocean floor using sonar. And since the 1970s, satellites have helped too, detecting subtle changes in sea surface height caused by underwater mountains and trenches. Together, they've mapped the ocean floor in broad strokes, revealing an average depth of 4,200 meters, deep enough to submerge the entire Alps or cover the Burj Khalifa five times over. But that's just average. In the Western Pacific lies something far more extreme, the Mariana Trench. It stretches over 2,500 kilometers, longer than the distance from New York to Miami and it cuts deep into the Earth's crust like a scar. At its southern end lies a specific point, Challenger Deep. This is not just the deepest part of the trench, it's the deepest known place in any ocean on Earth. Here, the ocean plunges to nearly 11,000 meters. That's over 36,000 feet. If you dropped Mount Everest into Challenger Deep, its peak would still be buried more than a kilometer below the surface. But how far deep have we actually made it? And how much deeper can we really go? The deepest a human has ever gone without any equipment is 253 meters, by Herbert Nitsch. In 2007, the Austrian freediver descended to 214 meters, over 700 feet on a single breath. No tank, no tether, just his body and the water pressing down. Five years later, he went even deeper, 253 meters, but paid the price. He surfaced with severe decompression sickness, leaving him temporarily paralyzed. It took years of recovery, and yet some divers keep pushing, using specialized gear. In 2014, Ahmed Gaber, a former Egyptian Special Forces diver, set the record for the deepest scuba dive ever recorded, 332 meters, nearly the height of the Empire State Building, but down into the darkness. To survive, he used a custom blend of oxygen, nitrogen, and helium, each gas fine-tuned for depth. The descent took 12 minutes. Coming back up, 15 hours carefully timed to avoid death by decompression. And that's as deep as we've gone. To go any further, we had to build something. Submarines became our first real vessels into the deep. The first machine to reach where no human could was the bathysphere in the 1930s. Lowered by cable, it took two men down to 923 meters, nearly a kilometer beneath the surface in total darkness. At 1,200 meters, you'd pass the wreck of the Lusitania, and at 3,800 meters, you'd find the Titanic, resting in the North Atlantic two and a half miles deep. It sank in 1912 and wasn't seen again until 1985. Deeper still, down at around 4,000 to 8,000 meters, lie thousands of kilometers of undersea internet cables. They're laid along the seabed using specialized ships and occasionally repaired by robotic submarines the size of delivery vans. These cables carry nearly all global internet traffic, quietly pulsing beneath crushing pressure in the dark. But it wasn't until 1960 that a crewed vessel actually touched the bottom. The Bathyscaphe Trieste, a strange balloon-shaped sub with a steel sphere underneath, carried Jacques Picard and Don Walsh to the Challenger Deep. 
they reached 10,916 meters, almost 11 kilometers straight down. The descent took five hours. The stay at the bottom, just 20 minutes. A window cracked, they came back up. No one returned for more than 50 years. Then, in 2012, James Cameron, yes, the Titanic director, made the journey solo in a custom-built sub. He reached 10,908 meters, becoming the first person to go alone to the deepest place on Earth. And in 2019, Victor Vescovo went even deeper, 10,934 meters, in a titanium hulled sub called the DSV Limiting Factor. It was the first vessel certified to repeatedly dive to full ocean depth and come back in one piece. But not every mission needed a pilot. In 1995, Japan's Kaiko, an unmanned robotic vehicle, reached the Challenger Deep and collected samples from nearly 11,000 meters below. In 2009, the US deployed Nereus, another remote submersible. It made it down, but was lost in 2014 when the pressure crushed it. Now, some want to go even deeper, not for exploration, but for extraction. The deep ocean hides the resources of tomorrow. Scattered across the seafloor are manganese nodules, potato-sized lumps rich in cobalt, nickel, copper, and manganese. These metals are essential for electric vehicles, renewable energy tech, and even satellites. In places like the Clarion-Clipperton Zone, a stretch of seabed in the Pacific the size of Europe, the ocean floor is littered with them. Several countries and companies are already preparing to mine this deep-sea frontier. But mining could stir up massive sediment plumes, destroy slow-growing species, and disrupt ecosystems that we still barely understand. Some scientists warn the damage could be irreversible. Others argue that terrestrial mining is more destructive, and that the ocean might offer a cleaner path forward. And while some look to the ocean for minerals, others are racing there for knowledge. India's Samudrayan mission is developing the Matsya 6000, a crude submersible designed to dive to 6,000 meters in the Indian Ocean by 2026. Backed by India's deep ocean mission, the craft completed its first harbor trials in 2025 and will begin shallow water tests soon. The US is deploying the EV Nautilus in 2025, an NOAA-led expedition to map and study the sea floor in the Western Pacific, near Guam, the Mariana Islands, and the Marshall Islands. Using remotely operated vehicles and autonomous systems, the goal is to catalog deep sea biodiversity and support global conservation efforts. China too has ambitious plans. By 2030, it hopes to open a deep sea research station 2,000 meters below the surface in the South China Sea. The facility will house six scientists at a time for month-long missions and will integrate unmanned submersibles and seafloor observatories to study methane hydrates, cold seep ecosystems, and tectonic activity. And then there's Proteus, a project some are calling the ISS of the ocean. Set to launch off Curaçao by 2026, the underwater habitat will sit 18 meters deep and allow scientists to live and work undersea for extended periods. It builds on earlier habitats like Aquarius in the Florida Keys and is focused on marine life, reef conservation, and sustainable ocean management. So whether it's for metals, microbes, or methane, the deep sea is quickly becoming Earth's next frontier. We've gone deeper than anyone thought possible, built machines to withstand pressure that would crush a tank, found alien-like life in total darkness, and now we're preparing to live down there, not just visit. But for all our progress, more than 80% of the ocean floor remains unmapped in high detail. Most of what's down there, still a mystery. We've always looked to the stars for the next great frontier, but maybe the real challenge, the real unknown, has been beneath our feet all along. So what do you think? Should we keep pushing deeper into the ocean for science, for resources, for answers? Or are there some places we should leave untouched? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more True Geo stories.